How do you see this one going? Really interesting matchup. Yeah, it's, it's always interesting watching Cole because um, obviously he's just always well, chaos, isn't he? So it's uh, <coughs> it's, it's always nice commentating on Cole as well. Yeah, one of the most apt nicknames we have. Chaos Cole Bedford. Keeps you guessing. Certainly does. An intriguing opponent that Cole has. Yeah. My countryman, Gary Clark, member of the Northern Ireland team. They became world champions last year. Fantastic player. Really, really taken to the to the pro series. Some huge results. Probably a player we see knocking on the door for things. You know, you wouldn't be surprised if Gary ran really deep in, in some of these events. No, yeah, definitely, yeah. It's, uh, it's one of them. There's, there's a lot of people that have come, that have come through from the amateurs and come up and settled in really quickly, really well. And you won't be surprised to see anyone go, go really deep. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen great runs. I mean, the Challenger Series in itself is a minefield. Some really good professional standard players. They don't just have the title of being a professional. Yeah, definitely. But the quality's there. The strength and depth that we have here at Ultimate Pool. Always to be seen. Well, come on, let's have your predictions. How do you see this match going? Hmm. Yeah, it, is a, it is a tough one to call, but I think if Cole continues the way he's playing, Cole... I'd have Cole to win, um, but then again, if Cole doesn't play well, then it, it, it's a tricky one. Yeah, it, it certainly is. Cole's one of these players, to me, a yeah, nice loss of turn shot there. He's either devastating yeah. or, or, or makes mistakes, and it's the, yeah. the game's there. I think unlocking the consistency for Cole will make him so much a better player and a really feared player yeah he runs hot and cold a lot doesn't he he's either running really well and flying around the table and getting results like he did earlier in the competition 7-0 he, he's the type of draw that you don't want to get because you don't know what you get with him yeah you know he, he can leave you as a spectator you know you may as well sit and be sitting beside me you know when you're playing him and then yeah. talking about his match or, or again you get something a bit more erratic and a little bit more scrappy and kind of you know, so it'll be interesting to see what type of type of player we get. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's not going to be much of the safety or cautious aspect from Cole as well, which you know. So that in that respect, it is good to play him because you know it's going to be a nice open game, and unless he is playing on the top of his form, you are going to get chances. So. Yeah. Similarly with Gary Clark, we always had a good laugh. He uh, he did a little bit of content. They <laughs> went out and there. Uh, he was asked about, you know, go for it or play a safety, and he said play a safety. And I heard that, yeah. yeah the, st the stuff that he got uh, back from uh, opinions from people was, so I don't know what's happened to you over the years, because that's typically not the way that, that you would go about things, Gary. But, yeah, I think we're going to see a nice open game. First real proper chance lands with Cole Bedford. Yeah, the uh, the shot Gary played, uh, there was the loss of turn, unless he was trying the skill shot, but the loss of turn didn't seem to have any value to me. I think he was trying the skill shot. Yeah, it was missing it. Yeah, I think given the angle, it, it was very, very difficult to make. Cole Bedford won't care. <coughs> He's feeling as well. Yeah, he certainly wears his heart in his sleeve. Oh, Ooh. wow! That's uh, unforced error, shall we say? Yeah. yeah, it must be very. It looks like it goes from here, but it must be very tight. Yeah, yeah. From our position, it does look like it. Though. Good shot. And if Gary Clark can pinch this, that's going to be a big steal. Absolutely, yeah. Big steal at the start of the match. From an error from himself. He's actually ended up winning the frame, which gives you a lot of confidence. 
to something like that in the opening frame, can that rock your confidence yeah. massively? Yeah, can, definitely. Can that affect how the match goes for you? It, well, it can. I, don't, I can't speak for everybody, but it can for me. There you go. Oh. But has he made a ball? No. Mm, no, he hasn't. He's quite lucky the white didn't go in. No, but he hasn't made a ball, so... And the reds are all available. So I think for now, for example, Gary was to take these reds out, then that's what he was touching on there. The double punishment is, is harder to take because you're thinking about, oh, I should have lost the frame before, so it should only really be one all. Yeah, the different dynamic to the game. I can tell you what, that wee nudge might have helped Gary a little bit. Stopped in, mm. pulled things out. Not bad. And it came out okay. It's a lot of room for error there, though. I think he could have just stunned it in and played it into the other corner and not had to move anything. But it shows how di how many different ways there are to go about things and how people see things differently. Yeah, and I think the game evolves. Like I, I personally, my sort of playing days come from a very old school. You don't move balls when you don't have to, yeah. and you know if you can avoid it, can and do avoid it. But the game's changed a little bit. Yeah, I think the rules have helped with that to dictate the, the way the game has changed. Um, but yeah, it's e each to their own. I, it's came out well for him, so I'm sure it won't be an issue. But again, that can also affect the player sat down. Because if he's thinking, oh, well, he didn't have to go into them or move them, but he has done them and he's come out perfect. If you've got that kind of mentality where you struggle mentally, that can, that can definitely affect you. Yeah, it, even the fact of, oh, he's gone into them and it's come out like this for yeah. him, but when I tried to do that, yeah. you know, I tried this, this happened, and yeah. you can ruminate quite a lot in terms of... You start you snow it's like a snowball effect then, it just, you can't stop. Whereas really, you should only be thinking about the positives and what you can do, not what your opponent's doing. I mean, we all know the theory behind it, it's just implementing it. Yeah, I have to say, Gary Clark... Oh, oh. No. Just commentators cursed them, and I didn't get the words out of my mouth. I was going to say, look, really good value for this, but absolutely, I was, uncharacteristic uh, miss. Yeah, they both missed. Well, that's an unforced error each, definitely. They're both big misses as well. They weren't exactly close. So, so yet again, the the mental sort of capacity swing comes because now Cole's saying, well, now we've had one each, you know, in terms yeah. of a big miss, and if I can punish Gary here. We kind of erase the the frame yeah, before. Absolutely, and that's a, that. And if I'm, if I'm Gary, that's an issue. If I'm playing Cole, I know that I know Cole's mood swings are going to be drastic and, and big. So if now Cole can get this, he's a very much a momentum player, and then he can reel off the next two or three without you even knowing. Yeah, you don't want to let Cole Bedford get up ahead of steam. Forward, I, I would say, but I mean, in the last two frames we've seen, we've seen a couple of big misses. So already it's only one nil. I mean, if if you miss these, you, your head's in bits, isn't it? it? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, Especially at this level, there may be people watching at home that think, "Oh, these these are actually quite difficult for me," and obviously. I'm not putting anyone's ability down. I'm just speaking about the level that that we're currently watching. Yeah, for our for our professionals here, yeah. I mean, these are a ten out of ten. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing the fractions in this game, the different levels and ability. I had a really good chat with Greg Batten actually in a previous match, and I personally think that the big differences between the top top players and and because. The ability for all professionals on this tour, I mean, every single player is ability-wise oh, yeah. absolutely phenomenal. You know, top of their game, the best players in the world we have in Ultimate Pool. But it's like, but then the difference between them is you would never expect them to lose. They're brilliant. Yeah, it's, you know, a, a great example of it actually is Tom Cousins. He's just won the British Open. Mm -hmm. By his own admissions, he didn't play very well. No, he didn't. But he's won a major tournament. Yeah. You know, a double eliminator come through a massive field. It's the same field that we have here. 
and not once did he play well and he, he would tell you that himself all the way through the tournament and it has to be there has to be something there yeah see I, i've been looking into this quite a bit because i need to work on it i think i don't know how it works or how to explain it but it's like shots like gary there gary's missed that shot and gary gets that 10 out of 10. he's missed that because he he's relaxed because he thought i've won the frame so he's relaxed and thought that's it i played that i played the tough shot he's sort of released his energy and his focus and then missed and this is the difference between us at our level and Tom and Gaz and Melin. They just don't miss easy balls. It's the focus, I think. I don't, I don't, I don't yeah, I, don't I, don't know. I think there's definitely something in it. But Gary with a great opportunity here. Just to forget about that. Yep. It's a really nice shot. Really, really controlled shot. This is all just about picking the right pattern. How are you for the patterns? What's, what's your uh, opinion on it? You, for example, work your way up the table and try and remove the white ball travel, or? I, I typically, whenever, I, I don't play anymore, but when I did, it was kind of picking off the clusters as I went along. Yeah. I, tend to find those that work from top down or bottom up it's difficult to reroute then whenever you've yeah. conditioned your brain to think i have to play the balls in the top half to come down to the bottom so i always tried to work in clusters and um it was always a puzzle for me yeah. you know trying to kind of work things out in that in that way nice break from Powell there controlled oh here we go then can Cole quickly return the favour? A red, I would say. Yeah, we'll get another look at this break. Yeah, great connection. You can see the cue ball right back up through the middle. And reds it is for Cole Bedford. No real problems to be seen here. And much like Gary's frame and last time around. Oh, with a fantastic opportunity to level yeah, this match. Absolutely, yep. I mean, again, at our level, these are you want these pretty much every time. But there are problems that you have to you have to go the right way about these because obviously not all of the balls go in all of the holes. But they're by no means difficult. Yeah, th <coughs> this is like we alluded to, the type of pattern as such where you just see it, yeah. you know, it just, it happens. just happens. Yeah. There are lots of different ways to go around it and every player will have their own way of going about things, they'll have their own way that they do things and, you know, you'll play shots that Cole would say, oh, well, I wouldn't have played that, yeah, I would have yeah, played this, absolutely. or uh, Gary would chip in and say, well, I actually <coughs> would have played this. But ultimately it's about how you see the pattern and how you execute it. Absolutely, yeah. He's a little bit. No, he's okay. We can see this ball in the middle. That's okay. It's great. See this again. It's not a problem, but if you, what we were talking about, consistency and things like that. People like Tom Cousins don't leave themselves straight or they don't have a problem at all in that kind of finish, whereas we do. Yeah, he had a big margin for error, it has to be said. Yeah, he's played a nice shot there. He played a lovely recovery shot, yeah. But my point is, if he underscrews that or doesn't get the connection he wants or gets a kick, he's then in trouble for the frame. Yeah, he has to come up with the big shot. He has to come up with a big shot, yeah, and you can't keep relying on doing that. Leads Carl Morris by one frame to nil. I can't see that over on table two. Not that we're advocating for you to leave Connor and I. Absolutely not. We've got a stormer of a match here. But we always like to give you a bit of variety here at Ultimate Pool. Everyone's got to have options, haven't they? These days. Another good break from Gary Clark. Yep. Nice. Excuse me. Nice split. 
I like it when it's I like it when it's like this. Even though he's got to just try and figure out what balls he wants and what route he wants to take. There's no there's no traffic. All of the colours are spread and there's yep. nothing together and arguments for both colour sets. I think the position of the eight ball dictated the reds yes, in, in Gary's favour. Personally, I think the yellows are in a better position, but the eight ball obviously are much trickier if you take yellows. Yes. Yes. Um, I think the only problem, it, well, it's, again, it's not a problem, but the only problem he's, he's going to have, if any, is which way he goes about getting on the ball, the red ball, just underneath the eight ball. He has to link that up right. And it's that reason why I think the yellows in themselves were the better colour set, yes, but that, the yeah. position of the eight ball obviously infinitely more difficult if you take yellows. Yes. And that's why Gary's taking reds. Yeah. yeah he's played on that now. That's a nice shot. I think he's playing on it next. He's gonna come swing back around it and leave the one over the middle for his last ball. Yeah, nice. Nice one to about it. Great shot. Yeah, fantastic control from Gary Clark. a right hand side on that one yeah there is see him him walking around the table getting down looking at this dead straight red he's doing that on purpose because which is fair play he's within, it, he's within the rules he's not doing anything wrong but he's doing that because he's playing cold I think I was just about to touch on sat in your chair watching people take rollings and tappings and taking ages about it it's frustrating culture so we're back again a little bit of an intermission give us a bit of a break another big break from Cole Bedford we're getting a second look at that He thought the white was going in there, I think. The way he chucked his cue in the air slightly. Thought he's okay, he's taken reds. Again, where he was off the break, I think yellows were probably the better colour set, but he didn't have an opening one. Which obviously dictates straight away that we need to go. Oh, he's done it again. Oh my. I mean that. Got it. Yeah, a little bit of fortune for Cole Bedford. He won't care. gone about these nicely A rapid finish it has to be said for chaos yeah the level this match three frames apiece yeah it's the evolution of I'm winning. pretty Luke started in the challenger series not sure I'm pretty sure he did winning breeds winning would he do whatever you write I need to check this but whatever you write and saying that Luke is the first Challenger that's been promoted that's won a professional series event. I'd need to go back into the archives for that one. Well, I'm sure we could uh, we could find out if we if they have another toilet break. I'll go and find out. <laughs> <laughs> and just as we say that, Luke's gone on the hill. He now leads Sean Story six frames to three. Back to the action here. Again, another 
it seems to be presentable opportunity for Gary Clark. See, I think that they I don't think he's hit them great because they've not gone everywhere, but they are <coughs> they are relatively nice, which I think quite fortunate. But you take it. A little flick on the eight ball, not overly what Gary would have wanted. Not a huge problem. Definitely something he can work out. Yes, the yellow next to the eight ball goes in the uh, left centre as we're looking. That's what he's just looking at now, where he needs to land. He'd be coming back first though. That's too short. So re -root. Yeah, I think the yellow two below the eight ball will obviously go to the bottom right. Yes. Unless he's decided that he wants to play the plant, or well he has to play the plant, unless he's decided that he's going to use it to get on the trickier one. goes in right center now. It goes in right center and also goes in bottom. bottom it looks right. like it goes in bottom right. I think we'll see him play it to the right center purely because he would need to be absolutely pinpoint accurate. There's no margin for error to play it the other way. And he's obviously landed on it exactly as he wanted to with that shot. I think that was a little mid-session reroute there because I don't think that was his intention. But always nice when things like that happen. Yeah, and I think this is what makes professionals professionals, the ability to, you know, if, if maybe maybe it was the way Gary wanted, maybe it wasn't, only Gary will know that, but the ability to reroute and be able yeah. to kind of reset. See, that's the thing I do. I do some coaching with some, uh, some managers in Derby, where I, where I play from at the club. And a big thing that I find with, with amateurs or people at like, uh, like a pub level. The stakes, so a mistake yeah. each, but other than that, yeah, it's been good. They've settled in, haven't they? There hasn't been many, or well, any really scrappy games, have they? They're just the balls are there. And, well, as I say that, all the reds clustered to the left. Yeah, but depending on the, he's looking at the eight ball here. It looks like. If that's a plan, the eight ball must go. Yeah. To bottom left, if he's thinking about yellows, is what he's looking at. Yellow balls in play. I'm certainly not surprised to see Cole at this stage of this tournament. If anybody like me follows him across social media, I see that he's practiced really hard for this and yep. one of those players that travels a lot for practice for quality for practice, practice. Yeah, which is arguably the right thing to do I mean I speak to a lot of obviously a lot of the pros all the time and to try and get decent practice is, is very difficult um, but yeah so sometimes you have to travel I'm fortunate enough, fortunate enough to have a, <coughs> a couple of people <coughs> around my area at a very high level. But then if they're not available, or they're at competitions, or, or they're just not available, then I've, there's, there's no one to practice with. So you're sort of struggling then, or you go to solo practice. Oh, I was going to say a really good three ball plant from Cole Bedford. bit too much done. Yeah. He was just trying to track that. Play that yellow. Yeah, he's annoyed with himself. You see the little tap of the leg. This is what we talked about. You'll always know how Cole's feeling. Absolutely. Does it double? Do I think it does. Cut it. Yeah, I, I don't know if he's got much choice. Looks that way. Oh, he's, he's overcut it. it. Wow, and he's knocked the red. Oh, wow. Good well to overcut that. Yeah, he knew it was thin, but he's overcompensated for how thin it was. Yeah, see, that's one of them shots where you say to yourself, I need to hit this as thin as possible, and then you tell yourself it's going to go in. Whereas you can always hit it thinner than you think. Yeah. 
Now Gary Clark. Opportunity to pull two clear for the first time in this match. Not an easy opportunity by any means. But he's got control, you would feel. Yeah, I don't think, especially in an, oh, if he wasn't on the cushion there, I don't think it was as hard as we think because I think the ball next to the, the red ball next to the left centre, if he could pop that, he could play it off the cushion and open the two reds below it. Obviously not now because he's on the cushion, which is very unfortunate. But Intriguing to get your insight into this, Connor. As I'm not a professional player, but my instinct there was, I could have locked. I felt I could have locked Cole into a really deadly snooker and got opened up my balls exactly. at the same time and got ball in hand. You know, which would have made that clearance <coughs> ten out of ten. Um, I'm not sure because but there is an argument for that definitely, and I'm not saying that it's wrong. Um, he's left that. Gary will be seething. But because of where Cole's yellow was, it was over the hole. So any snooker, really, barring an, an unbelievable one, it's not going to be a difficult escape. Oh my. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Did not expect that. Let me just take a second look at that. Yeah. Just keep across it. Twitch. Yeah. Oh no. See now what you were saying is is it definitely applicable. Get ball in hand, get prime position. Yeah, exactly what Gary's done. See that I'm I'm a bit Well, again, me personally. Even if he gets ball in hand, he's still got to find a way of getting those two open. Whereas if he left that red where it was, that was the red to use to get them open. In my opinion. Nice shot. Good hit. Great hit. A very good hit. What I think he can do, as you say, now. To keep, yeah. yeah. Applying the snooker, because as we know, the Cole, he's got to get out of the snooker and hit a cushion. And all that's going to do is promote Gary's balls into the open. This is going to be hit with some pace. Yes, it is. Where's it going? Could have been worse. Yeah. <laughs> but then that's another thing. That's another momentum swinger. If Cole would have just put his cue through that and got lucky and potted it, Gary would have been fuming that all he's done is kept mapping up and not really doing anything. Yeah, absolutely. I think that there's an argument for if you play the right shot and someone gets lucky, maybe it's a little bit easier to digest, but you still kind of yeah. almost have the frame yeah, squared away. It. I mean, I think that's why my my argument to go for the clearance when he went for it first time was there because if he goes, he eliminates anyone else getting a shot, just don't let them come back to the table. But then if you do run out of position, and you're not perfect on getting your ball out, then you've always, then you've always got your option of going safe and getting your two visits, not two visits, sorry, getting ball in hand. A blast from the past. Yeah, <laughs> just went into a bit of autopilot there. To get your uh, ball in hand that way. Yeah, I, I played one challenger event last year. I hadn't played pool for nearly 10 years. <laughs> and I fouled against my opponent. I, I did the two fingers as in two shots, man. Yeah. Type of thing, and he looked I mean, at me as if <coughs> I was crazy. <laughs> even in um, even in practice, I always I always call it two. I say I oh, yeah, you've got two, but I mean everyone knows we haven't. It's just something that's said, isn't it? Really well judged there from Gary Clark. Into a blind pocket, and a chance here. A chance that he probably, after he did eventually play the snooker and he left it for Cole, there's no way that he thought he was going to get another opportunity to go 5-3. No, absolutely not. And that's a big, uh, that's a big, that's mentally for Gary, that's huge because he's now going to go 5-3 instead of 4-all. And the manner in which he's done it, Cole's missed, well, he's literally missed balls over the hole. Forgets about that black man. 
Yep, absolutely. So it's like the double punishment thing again. Absolutely. Gary with a chance. And he's got one. How are they going to land? I'll tell you. They look nice. They look pretty nice. Just that yellow pass, do we think? Two reds bottom right. Yep, it's very tight. From our camera angle, it's always tough to see. But then there's, there's an argument for reds there too. Because there's a couple of plants you can play later on, and they're not difficult plants. Luke Gilbert has wrapped up the match. Seven frames to four against Sean Story. He is into the quarterfinal later on this evening. And he will play Red Tom Cousins. Play. The number one player against the most recent Pro Series champion. Coming to you live. Around about half six this evening. Yeah, Gary opting for reds there. Yeah, it felt like reds with the balls for me. As you say, that, that yellow just above the two reds at the bottom right corner. Unsure whether that would have went. Gary's on this plant now. He, yeah, mustn't be on it as he, as he liked. So. He is now. That's perfect. That's Great a shot. shot yeah. Because now he can he can decide where he leaves the red above it, if that makes sense. To the viewers at home, it might not make sense what I'm speaking about. But what I mean is, if he wasn't as perfect on this plan, he could always make the plan. However, the red that's just stopped dead there, you saw, that could have drifted up or down the table had he have not been perfect. And he also afforded himself the chance, rather than having to play two plants, as we talked yes. about earlier, he's left himself perfect on this ball to the middle. Yeah, so that was didn't look like a didn't look like a difficult shot or a high tariff shot, but I'd say that, that was that was the most important shot of the match where all he's done is screw screw one into the middle and screw back six inches. Yeah, it's left himself perfect. Yep, fantastic opportunity for Gary Clark. That's fine on and off the cushion. I mean he wouldn't have wanted that but it's not not an issue. Relatively simple two ball combination for the Balamina man. Yeah, you just saw there using a little bit of check side just to square the cue ball up. And Gary Clark makes it to the hill, acknowledged to the top of the knee by his opponent. And on the main table, starting in about half an hour's time, Tom Jones will play Sean Chipperfield in a very slow-paced match. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, that'll be quick. It's like when me and Chippy play, there's never, uh, there's no messing about. We never get to the buzzers or anything. And I think that'll be the same with Tom. A disappointing result for Cole Bedford here. He actually hit that break quite well, but nowhere this to go. Is, this is it. And right now, if that's me, I'm thinking the four gods are against me because... I've hit the break really well and it's just left me nothing. And then you start eating yourself up when really it's just how the balls have landed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the break's one of those things where obviously it's important to practice it and your technique and everything, but if they don't go or, you know, nothing goes down or you don't land with a shot, it's just bad luck. Yeah, absolutely. So, that's a good shot if you can't see the red in the middle. What does Cole do here now? The, but what they're doing is they're, they're jostling for reds. Yeah, and if you are new to international rules, before the colours are decided, you cannot play one colour set onto another. That would be a lost turn. Cole going for one. Um, has he given Gary a chance for this match? Yes, he has, yeah. I think he... he I didn't think he. I don't think he saw a safety shot. Um, I wasn't even sure that red went. It obviously did because he, because Cole went for it. But yeah, he's, he just didn't hit it right. And Gary just going through his paces here. Thank yeah, you, it's just those two reds below the eight ball. He needs to. He needs to be pretty precise with where he leaves the cue ball. 
after the shot. He's done that just so he didn't overscore. You see that often. You know, you know that you can't. There's, there's no value in going long. Overscrewing is, is worst case scenario. So you always see we end up under hitting. Yeah, nothing for long with that shot, but he looks a little bit short. So a reroute for Gary. A nice shot. Still that problem in the middle of the table below the eight ball to figure out for Gary Clark. And it will define this frame and indeed if he gets it, this match. There's an argument for the plant, but it's definitely a last resort. You, you know, oh, that's nice. That's perfect. That's exactly where he wants to be. Has he rolled just far, not far enough? That's definitely close. If he's far enough, you couldn't have put it better with your hand. That's exactly where he wanted to be. Yeah, if he's come far enough, he's down on it. If he has, that's an abs excellent positional shot from he's Gary Clark. He's, oh, he's just squeezed it. In the side. And what's his angle like? I think he'll have to take his medicine. He's definitely going to have a shot at it. Yeah. He's not going to get as close to it. Yeah, you can just see yeah. he's just the wrong side of it. So he's not going to be as perfect on it as he would like. But you'd fancy him to get it. You would. But you fancy Cole to get that eight ball. Yeah. Big point now. I think Gary knows one good shot. He's on the match. I have a tendency to overhit these, you know. Hit them too hard. Yeah, he just wants the control that he's there got the go. pot. He's got a shot at the eight ball. It's probably not as easy as he would have liked. But he knows he just needs to focus on the pot. A place in the quarterfinals at stake. You go long. Mm, depends how I'm playing. Yeah. Yeah, looks like Gary's going long. He's rolled it and he's oh, missed he's it. Missed it by, by a way. Oh dear. Big moment that. He could have gone. He could have gone middle pocket. I, I, I think if it's me, I'm gonna I play it with a little bit more conviction. I think I'm gonna. I think if I'm going long. I'm, I'm stunning it. Yeah, punching it punching a little bit more. In, yeah. Because if you roll it, then you, you can always, you've always got that option of standing up on it too quickly. Or I think just given the cue ball being a little bit closer to the cushion, you know, added a little bit of extra pressure. But Cole Bedford, no hanging around here. He's not happy with that. He's, he's fine, but. Yeah, forced into really going up. I think he probably would have preferred to. Yeah, he'd, he'd have preferred to work his way down in a logical order. But again, this is what we mean by rerouting. Very, very, very quickly. Yeah. Cole Bedford. I think we'll, we'll see Cole speed up now. Yeah, punishing the Gary Clark mistake. And we march on. It will be Gary's break next. So Gary will get another opportunity. We'll also see the Women's Pro Series in action. The best lady players in the world will be on show. And indeed, the Women's Challenger Series kicking off very soon too. Nice break there from, from Gary. Very well controlled cue ball. A little bit of a chin scratch from Gary. He wants to work out his route. This is the leave he's laid with. I think I would go yellows. And Gary agrees. Too 
because that the yellow he's playing now is the was the only real problem one. Um, some people may think that, there, that there's a problem with the one on the left hand side next to the red. However, it's easily connect connectable with the yellow just below it, and it goes into the top pocket. So that wouldn't be an issue. It's Gary on this long one. The problem with this, no, he's not. So <clears throat> this is a more difficult shot, but it might actually work in Gary's favour because the problem, if he had to take these two balls at the bottom and then go back up, is the eight ball's a little bit guarded by those two reds above it. Yeah. There wasn't a natural connection. He was going to have to manufacture something. This is an incredibly difficult shot. Yeah. I don't know whether I'd have played it a little bit. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. At least to try and move one of the balls over the hole, unless you just completely miss it. Right? Ah, good shot from Cole. Got his bad ball out straight away. He's figured it out. I think we'll see him speed up. 15 second shot clock now in play. Yeah, taking this just to make the connections easier. There's something that he's not happy about though. I think it's the red closest to the eight ball where he's going to put it. That shot tells me that it might not go into this bottom left corner. It's interesting to see how he's going to go about this. He wants... Yeah. No, he so it doesn't go in the... He wanted to land straight on this or str much straight, straighter than straighter he was. Straighter because what he wanted to do was track the white down here. Um, down between the eight ball and the yellow and play the red into the right centre. If it went in the bottom left pocket, he would be perfect. So this he wouldn't be he wouldn't be as upset. It must be tight for the red on the racking line into the bottom left because yeah, I think shot clock pressure, I think he's decided he has to kinda of go for it. But he should this this is this is so tough. We don't even know if it goes. Off the yellow? Yeah, let's try it. What a shot. Fantastic shot, Cole Bedford. Yeah, now he's happy. Not only five, he's back, and now it's his break. Not only a fantastic shot, but the context of this match. A great out from Cole Bedford. Right. This break, huge in the context. He's hit it well. He's, got, he's got a got ball. ball. Eight ball. Where does the eight ball go? Eight ball goes left centre. So he's going to. The yellows have split well. That eight ball looks very guarded to me. Yeah. I think he might have to move that, you know. It's very deceptive on this camera. He's moving it. He's got. Oh, wow. He's played a really nice shot. What a shot from Cole Bedford. Let's see if we can get a second look at that. We don't want to miss too much of this, but that shot. Really, really well taken. Lovely shot. If Cole, Cole clears these in quick fashion, does he become favourite? <laughs> Even though it's Gary's break? A, a huge momentum swing, you know. Since Gary's missed that eight ball, he's kind of been frozen out. Yeah, he has, yeah. He's got to mind his work a little bit still, because even though... Even though it does... The eight ball does now go, he's still got to get on it. And that's why he wants to take this one. He's going to use the red as a stopper, I believe. He wants a full contact. He's got it. Lovely. And it goes in the top. And he can pick his point. Really nice clearance from Cole Bedford. If he can get it, he's not perfect on it. 
It's still very He's gettable. Very gettable, but it's very missable. Yeah, we've seen him miss eight balls in this match. Oh. It's there. He's got it. Right then. Mental strength needed from the Northern Irishman. Yeah. He's got a ball, so he's got it. all you want is first opportunity. He has, and I think Reds are the nicer of the two. At first glance. Extension call. Taking his extension. Yeah, Reds a bit marginally. Not the friendliest, but certainly better than yellows yes yeah. but it's gary sees yellow. it differently he sees something we haven't gone too far he wanted to leave himself an angle on that developed two yellows that are bunched up together yeah this is really tough from here yeah see the, the thing is now especially now you, especially with the shot clock pressure you get into the realms of do or die well, this is a huge plant and if he doesn't get it the reds are everywhere nope oh oh was he tied up the eight ball? In the eight ball? Yeah, well, he can still get on it, but it's not in the most accessible pocket. And Cole Bedford. I'm confused as to why he went yellow there, but. Let's let Cole back in. Cole will be absolutely thrilled. Yes, now Cole's going to get rid of that red, which was the problem red. And Gary Clark's going to be sick. Gary Clark missing that eight ball to win this match 7-3. Cole Bedford with a great opportunity to completely turn this around. Absolutely. Wow. And Cole doesn't need to rush. Wow. He certainly doesn't need to rush. It's go really going to be all about getting from the last red to this eight ball for Cole. I think, which I think will be fine. He's just going to leave it roughly where the red is now, the, the cue ball. Yep, where he's putting his cue. And then what he'll do is he'll top through and bring the white through the two yellows. That's it all. Can he come between the eight ball and the yellow? Yeah, I think he's got. Oh no, he's looking. Yeah, no, he, he looks, looks like he's ball. okay. Like no, it doesn't look like it from here, but these cameras are very good at making us look silly. What a shot! What a shot! Cole Bedford. With this eight ball for the match, I'm in shock. It swung. I can't believe he's. Yeah. He's yeah. You see the fist, fist pump, and you know, and you, that's why yep. Cole Bedford, Gary Clark missed an eight ball to win this match seven three, and from there Cole Bedford's just come from nowhere.